Coming up, Obama's inauguration pictures, but not just any pictures. Russia is shutting down its space tourism branch. Is that the end of space tourism as we know it? And the ESA is building a new kick butt telescope, or they've already built it and they're about to launch it, something like that. All of that and a whole lot more coming up on this January 23rd edition of Space Vidcast Live. I really like that open. I actually. do too. It's that's awesome. A, that's a fun open that, <laughs> that's uh, neat and oh. uh, interesting to do. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me is the lovely, beautiful, talented, and incredible Carrie Ann Higginbotham. We are the Space <laughs> Vidcasters. We are doing this audio cast live. Normally we're a vidcast, but uh, we're audio. So let's go ahead and bring up the chat room because we do have the chatters uh, with us tonight, which is awesome. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We are having fun issues with Charter that mm -hmm. is making it uh, a little bit difficult to do. Now, let me ask you guys. I've got a, uh, um, I've got a interesting proposal, and yes. that is in space, it's not possible to, it, when you develop a lunar colony or a Mar Martian colony, it may not be possible at first to actually <laughs> have any meat. Right. Because they can't bring up enough animals. Right. So um, you may have to be vegetarian when you go to the lunar colony or on Mars or in a Martian colony. If you're going to stand there, stay there for any extended uh, amount of time at least. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking uh, to start getting myself prepped for that because I love meat. Uh, I, I'm going to go vegetarian. You're going to go vegetarian. You know what? I have a better idea. I'm going to start having a taste for silkworms. <laughs> well, go vegetarian one day out of the week. So what do you guys think? Should we go vegetarian one day out of the week? Uh, Thursday is most likely because that's the right. day of the show in the United States. Right. Should we go vegetarian one day out of the week? And if I do that, would you guys be willing to go vegetarian on that as well? <laughs> so spam, no, spam does not count, OM, as... Uh, it, doesn't, know, it doesn't count as meat. Yeah, there you go, exactly. <laughs> So if, if you guys are willing to do it one day out of the week, Thursdays in the mm -hmm. U.S. or Fridays if you're a, a, in a plus GMT. Or if you're a November cat all the time. Or exactly. You know, how many of you are willing <laughs> to do that? So we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that a little bit later. If we have more of you willing to do that, then, you know, maybe I'll actually uh, I'll give it a shot. We're going to start an SVC weight loss program. Yeah, well, I'm already doing the weight loss thing. <laughs> no, I know, but we could do it together. It'll they be, say it's always better when you do it as a community. So that's that's kind of the that's kind of thing. So let's get into some uh, let's get into some space news, shall we? Space news. <laughs> Everyone gets so upset that we took the the hand no, they movements like the away. Open. They like so, the open. No, no, no. They can't. The really. I mean, it's great. Don't get me wrong, but you know, here you go. A little hand oh, wavement please. for you is what we're doing there. All right. All right. So this is my story. So I'm gonna start. For those of you who are living in the U.S. and those of you who don't live in the U.S., I suppose, are very aware of Obama's inauguration on January 20th of this year, uh, which happens to be earlier this week. Maybe you watched the inauguration. Maybe you watched, the, like, you know, the, the parade and all that other fun stuff. Big shout out to NASA's LEM vehicle at the end of the, uh, the parade there, which I thought was very cool. But maybe you didn't see these very cool pictures. These pictures were taken from the Geosat 1, which of course went up Geosat in September, I believe, of 2008. And keep in mind, this is from 400 some odd miles above the Earth, taken at 17,000 miles per hour, going north to south, and all of these teeny tiny little black things are people. Two There's million people. Two million people showed up to this. And I just thought that this was an amazing picture. There's a couple more of them. Of course, the links will be in the show notes. But this picture, I, I just think, is the best. Because really, Obama is sitting like way over here, something like that. And these people are way over. And if you keep going, if you were to be able to see it over here somewhere, that's where the National, the Washington Monument is. And there were still people back there. They actually had huge TV screens, et cetera, et cetera. And I just thought, 
This is an amazing picture. Well, they're asking for a link. We'll add that link into the show notes, but the link is at uh, news.cnet.com slash 8301-13578 underscore 3 dash 1014 dash 38 dot so bad html so that's where the that's where the full link is located that's where it is but you know just so you know what's going on there so my item we've got uh <laughs> russia is shutting down its space tourism program what Exactly. So, How am I going to get into space? Well, this, they're shutting it down. They, they, space Adventures, I believe it was Space Adventures, mm -hmm. used to do their space tourism through the Russian Soyuz program. And so all those, the half a dozen or so space tourists that have gone up to the International Space Station have gone on Russian vehicles and they are shutting it down. And they're shutting it down because they're expanding the International Space Station, allowing for up to six people to live there permanently. Also bringing us from, I think it's like 10 to 33 hours. Let me verify that. Uh, not in my show notes, but it, it allows us, it brings them from 10 to like 30 hours of actual experiment time. And this is interesting because space tourism now is kind of taking like a step backwards almost. Kind of, yes. I, it, it sort of depends on how you look at it. Yeah, we won't be able to go with the Russian Space Agency anymore. Uh, they just simply can't do it for whatever reason. I mean, obviously, there's a bunch of different reasons. One of the other reasons uh, is that there are other countries out there that helped us make the International Space Station and yet they've never touched it. That's a problem, right? So ja Japan has, and JAXA has an entire module right. on the International Space Station, and I think they've only sent one astronaut up, one or two, two. to actually just serve, and that's it. That's all they've ever been able to send That's up kind there. of ridiculous. I mean, you have to admit, um, we, I don't think we've ever had any Canadians up there, maybe one or two, same kind of thing. Well, they send their Canadian arms up there, their big robotic. They, just the arms. Yeah, and Dexter, the Dexterous <laughs> robot. No, but that's what I'm saying. That's I mean, there mean. are entire countries that have built things for the International Space Station, and they haven't ever been there. So, that's well, that's a good question. Do they sad. plan to keep two Soyuz capsules there, capsules there for lifeboats when they go up to a six crew? Because each Soyuz capsule can only hold three people. Right. So, um, not really sure yes? what's going to... Yes, no, and Canada, no, 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 of course, Canadians have been up, but I'm just saying that there hasn't been like an all-Canadian crew or an all-Japanese crew up there when... You know, clearly, it's an international space station. Well, there's not going to be an all... Not the any, American space station. Well, there's station. not going to be an all-anything crew up there ever. I mean, it's always going to be a mix of people. But a lot of these countries still want to get more access to the ISS. Right, and To run their experiments so. in their modules that they paid for this $100 billion structure. Exactly. The sad thing is that, of course, space tourism now is taking a step backwards because the, the, that outlet to get to the ISS is gone. In, in well, it depends a, on how you look at it. I mean, SpaceX... That's how I look at it. Well, right. Well, I don't look at it that way. How's oh that for an answer? Um, because I, th I really do have a very strong belief in uh, privatized space companies really stepping up as soon as 2020, 2010. This is 2009, of course. But they're not going to go to the ISS. They're going to do suborbital flights only. Getting to the ISS is a totally different story. So if you want to spend any time in space other than, say, five minutes, right. that's not going to happen by 2010. All right, fine. I'm just saying. No, that's fine. Just Do you saying. like that? See if I care. Next news item, that's all you. <laughs> the last news item, of course, is we're talking about, all right, so STS-125 was supposed to have gone up in, what was that, September, October, November? I think every month of every year. Uh, yeah, I know. It was supposed to have gone up in every single month of 2008, and it hasn't gone up yet. It should be going up this year, 2009, hopefully within the first quarter or so. And that's to fix our, you know, our trusty workhorse, Hubble. Well, what happens when we're done with Hubble? Well, hopefully, we'll get this guy to come up with us. It's, that's a lovely picture. I'm really glad you <laughs> picked that one. But you can't I, even tell that that's a telescope. What's wrong with you? Yeah, you can. It's got like telescope it's a, the, thing. Look right there. Look, oh, it like man. All right. This is the William Herschel telescope, named, of course, for William Herschel. Thanks for that. <laughs> who discovered Uranus in 1809. This is a telescope. It's going to be a telescope. You know what? It could have been the Zeller Higginbotham. Okay. And uh, then maybe that. I yeah, suppose. Yeah. No, my story. Thank you. Anyhow, the William Herschel Telescope, <laughs> named for William Herschel, who discovered Uranus in 1809, so it's the 200th year of that particular discovery, which, oddly enough, has been constructed all through the 80s. It was done being constructed, and yet we haven't got it in the air yet. It's supposed to go up, hopefully, spring of 2009, with any luck. And this is coming from the ESA. A couple, what? Why are you looking at me funny like that? We haven't gotten it in the air yet? Correct. What? Keep going. Okay. 
Anyhow, uh, it's scheduled to launch, let's see, spring 2009, mission is ending around 2011, 2012, somewhere in there. Uh, it does have the largest mirror ever built for a space telescope. It's 3.5 meters in diameter, just under 12 feet, for those of you who don't understand what meters are. Yeah, exactly. It will be able to collect long wavelength radiation from some of the coldest and farthest objects in the universe, which I think is amazing. And it actually has a huge spectral range of uh, far, far infrared to submillimeter. More so than Hubble, then I assume? Yes. And then e more so than even James Webb? I don't know. Okay. I didn't compare James Webb to this one. Okay. I only did WST to Hubble. Okay. Well, I, I mean, it, it, it's interesting because this was built, <laughs> I think, before Hubble was then. It was... It sounds like it was finished. Finished before Hubble, but it's never been, it's never Guys long. are making Uranus jokes. Ha ha. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. That's okay. Great. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, I just think it's interesting that their older technology is better than the technology we currently have floating up there. Now, having said that. Well, it we... is the ESA. That's true. And uh, they, they have a lot more bureaucracy to work through, and I think they're really? better at it. They have many a country working That's for true. ESA as opposed That's to. That's true. Fair ah! enough. Country. That's fair enough. Fair enough. Absolutely. All right. So there you go. That's All right. What I'm saying. Let's. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be talking about um, uh, space, the new space race, and really, who cares? I had to look at my notes. That's it, what we're talking about. That is. That's the main topic <laughs> for today. And actually, our TLA for today is going to be ATH. And Do we have that's, a thing for we that? have. Look at that. Check that out. Look at that. Oh, ATH. you guys remember TLAs, right? Yeah. We need you to tell us what the TLA stands for. So. TLA this week is ATH. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Crow River Coffee Company in Watertown, Minnesota. Situated on the bank of the beautiful Crow River, we offer espresso drinks, delicious food, live music, bulk beans, and artisan items. You can see us at crowrivercoffee.com. Thanks. I do honestly think that uh, that people do care, that the average Joe is aware of it and does care. Oh, I, I see, in my argument is, I don't think they are, and mm -hmm. I don't think they do. I don't think that the average Joe knows that there is a space race going on. I think that the number of friends that we have, or the people that we coordinate with, mm -hmm. they, they probably know about that. Right. But there aren't a whole lot of other people outside of that that really know that there is a there's a there's a we're in the midst of a brand new space race that's about to change forever change the landscape of humanity. I just I, I don't I, I don't see people understanding that. Hmm. Well, if anything, if this makes any difference to you at all, which I know it really kind of doesn't, but it made at least a little bit of an impression on me. I went to Google. Google knows everything, right? Google takes care of everything. Google keeps track of everything. Google hears everything. Google is everything. So I figure, if I can find some sort of information on Google, um, hi, and like kids in space, for instance, I Googled kids in space, or kids and space. Oh, I just walked in front of the camera, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you did, which is why like I was twice. a little confused. Wait, wait, hang on, let me do it again. Yeah, okay. Hi, hi, yes, no, I was talking, that's cool, <laughs> awesome. Why give me a camera if you're not gonna let me use it? Anyhow, point is, that I googled kids and space and I came up with page after page after page and I'm not talking hit after hit I'm talking pages of hits of information for kids and not just for kids but some of it's by kids and not just children I'm not talking like the cute little rugrats that run around everywhere I'm talking about high schoolers high schoolers interested in space and interested in talking 
about space, to space, but around there, space, for space. There have been a couple there, of ISS downlinks, even in the last week, talking to hundreds, hundreds of kids at a time. Yes, and they actually had a to like- low number. I mean, that's incredibly low. Of course, there are people interested in it. There are always going to be general people interested in the topic, but hundreds is a really low number. We should be talking about millions of people, millions and millions and millions. Uh, you know, you had an article and you said there were 5,000 comments. I'm like, only 5,000? There should be 10, 20, 50, 100, 150,000 comments on, on something of this nature. But there aren't. There's are so few comments. Yeah, but how many people comment on stuff? Well, I don't know. Okay, then. <laughs> so there. Well. Buddy, <laughs> eat it. <laughs> well, you know, and even, again, you know, hundreds of kids, and, and that's great. I'm glad that kids are getting engaged. Right. How many kids do we have in school right now? I, I, I don't know. Probably in the millions. So of those millions, 800 were interested in the space that we know of. I no, mean that about 800 at least. No, 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 no. 800 high schoolers had a downlink to the ISS. One of the schools only had 20 minutes. They got the entire school together to sit in front of a big TV, but probably. But that doesn't mean that the students are interested. It means that the students were forced to go watch an ISS thing. I, you know, fine. I completely disagree in every way, shape, and form. It's not even funny. Okay. I, I, so there. <laughs> you know, if anything, science cares. Because we have way too many questions and not enough answers. And the only way we're going to get those answers is up there. We're not going to get them down here. I, it's just not going to happen. I want you to be right. I just fear that you're not. I, I think that most people are worried about themselves right now. We're in a global economic crisis, and I think that they're worried about where their next paycheck is going to come from, not whether NASA can make it onto the moon, back to the moon and onto Mars. And quite frankly, I think that they're saying, why, are we, why am I spending my tax dollars on NASA to, for them to go back to the moon? Hey, We've but if we can there. We've done get that. NASA back to the moon, do you know the kind of things that can happen down here on Earth? Of for crying out loud, now Tang doesn't count, but Velcro does, okay? <laughs> and it's just anything and everything we touch, barcodes come from flipping NASA. The way we sleep, the way we eat, the... GPS comes from NASA. Frickin' satellite TV comes from NASA. Like, anything and everything comes from space. If we don't get there, if we don't do it, then we're not going to have those advances. Essentially, it's the next advancement in humankind. I agree. I just don't think people know that. Yeah, well, next time, can we trade spaces? Can we trade places or something? No, you know what I mean. <laughs> can next time again, I say, I don't think that's going to happen, and then you can yell at me about that, because I don't like getting yelled at. Well, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just saying, I'm not yelling. All, all I'm saying is I, I really don't think that people understand what we're in right now and what the advancements we're going to get 10 to 15 years out. And that's part of the problem with space travel is that we don't see the results of all of this money and hard work for another 10 to 15 years. So we put billions of dollars into this. We invent all new technologies. I, I mean, incredible things. The computer mouse is linked to NASA. The mouse. I mean, the way you interact with your computer is linked to NASA. Mm -hmm. but, and, and, but people don't think that. They don't, they don't think, oh, computer mouse, this came from NASA, or this was funded by NASA. Right, 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 right. So I... Okay, you know what? One more thing. One more. One, this, okay. Space tourists. Right? Yeah, yeah, Space yeah. enthusiasts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yep. There was an article I just read that said that pretty much since Virgin Galactic started taking names, so granted, when you take a name, you have to put down twenty thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. That's just a deposit. Yep, for a two hundred thousand dollar ticket. Right, right. Yeah. Their names have doubled, doubled each quarter. They practically double. They have a list so freaking long. They're not going to be able to get everybody in space until they can like manufacture these things like on wholesale. I mean, it's. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Words. <laughs> Words go here. You know what I mean? Go to my local Costco, I'll pick up a White Knight 2, <laughs> no, Spaceship I'm 2. I'm serious. We, they have so many names and so many people willing to pay and so much money going into it that people must be interested, right? Right? Uh, you know, 
Some people are. I'm not saying that all people aren't. I, I think the... Yeah, but not all people are interested in a bike. Not all people are interested in okay, ice well, cream. This brings not up the... all people are interested in the, you know, okay. HD switchover thingy, thingy, thingy. Okay, well, they will be real soon. All right, okay. <laughs> so, fair enough. Uh, I will accept that as an answer, but you bring up another good point, which mm -hmm. is privatized travel. Mm -hmm. So, what does the space race matter? Privatized travel is going to be able to work a lot faster than NASA ever could or any of these government space agencies, because privatized travel doesn't have all the red tape that these government, government agencies have. So they have a lot more resource, and, and they, can, they can move quicker than mm -hmm. a government agency like NASA. Right, they're more I'm not saying NASA's good or bad, I'm just saying they can, private travel can move faster. Right. So does this space race even matter anymore? Because we've got privatized travel trying to figure out how to monetize this thing, and, and getting people up into space, you know, actually, private travel is going to put more people in space in one year than the last 40 years combined. Right. What I am kind of wishing was that uh, GLXP was still here because I think that he would have a whole lot to say about uh, privatized space in general, that there should always be some sort of race. There should always be some sort of uh, uh, prize at the end. And being the first to do it, who doesn't want to do that? Who doesn't want to be first to Mars? Who doesn't want to be the first human on Mars? I want to be. I do. Blair from NASA Edge, he wants to be the first, the, what media was it? Not. Media not. No, 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 no. I'm going to be the first media not, so no I offense, want, Blair. Love wanna, you to death. Don't get the, me wrong. I want to be the first. No, no, no. I'm me. Me. Want to know why? Because ladies first, and I go through the door before you. Yeah, but it could be dangerous. No, could not be. the point. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. I just want to. You know, Flared has a good point. Who, who cares who gets there so long as someone gets there? And you know, I totally agree with that. But so doesn't that I, mean I it's still a race? Do you see what I'm saying? If there's no, it, well, but if there's it, a finish line, there's a race. Period. Yeah, but there is there a finish line in space travel? So we get to the moon. Great, we achieved that goal. Right. Now we go to Mars. Great, we've achieved that goal. Right. Now we're going to find another goal that's further out. We're explorers. That's what we do. That it's human nature. It's still a race, isn't it? Who gets there first? Who does it better? Who does it fastest? Who does it cheapest? Who does it safest? Who? It's still a race. Well, I'd love to know your comments. And for everyone joining us live, especially since you're only seeing this as a uh, audio cast, <laughs> certainly, you know, watching the video on demand, leave your comments on spacevidcast.com. Do you think the space race matters? Do you even care that we're in a next generation space race 2.0, as it were? And this time, we're not just battling NASA against Russia. This time, it's NASA against China. It's NASA against India. It's NASA against Russia. It's NASA against anyone else and it's, it's all of them against private travel at the same time mm -hmm. so do you care does it matter what do you think is going to come of this is this a good thing or is it a bad thing so you know, both yeah I, I think you're right i think it's both i think it's going to spur innovation but uh did you hear that somebody recording they, <laughs> i was right yeah i just want to be very clear about that <laughs> <laughs> Can I take it back? Can I take it no. back? No! <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll leave the show there. Uh, we, we started with our uh, tw Twitter trivia question. Actually, Adam has a thing. You should repeat the Twitter trivia question. Oh, sure. After the audio was up when you were saying... Well, then let's repeat the Twitter trivia question, which was, this is the 23rd anniversary of this discovery. What is the discovery, and who discovered it? Send your answer via Twitter, starting with at SpaceVidCast, for a chance to win. So since, <laughs> since we've been having technical issues, we probably will not announce the winner on tonight's show or what the uh, actual answer is. But when we do have a winner, let me show you. Well, yeah, kind of show you. Huh? Run, 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 run off camera. Da, 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 da. <laughs> this is what we have for you. We have a bevy of stickers because I know how y'all like stickers. We have an STS-126 patch sticker. We also have a couple of Google Lunar X Prize stickers. Thank you, Mike. We also have the infamous Space Vidcast sticker. Yep. And, and, as an added bonus, because we love you so much, we have a NASA t-shirt. And it says, failure is not an option. So there you go. What size is that? Is it a men's large? It happens to be a men's large. Men's large NASA t-shirt. Yes. Failure is not an option. So there you go. For those... For anyone who wins, that's what you get. Yep. Don't don't worry about it. That we will have many, 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 many Twitter trivia questions. Twitty, 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 trivia. Exactly. We have to cheat this because the answer was in there, so I had to go backwards in order to get. Oh, okay. Because we were going to do the answer in the show. Normally, we'll actually have a Twitter trivia winner 
right here in the middle of the show. But of course, bandwidth, we, we're blaming Charter on this one. Charter has actually, believe it or not, Charter's bandwidth. Not our fault this time. Not our fault. Uh, if, if we were to take a 56K modem, that would be actually faster than the ba broadband bandwidth we're getting from Charter right now, which is why this is an audio only show. So we'd like to thank Charter for the support of spacecast.com. I thought Comcast was bad. I didn't think it could get worse than Comcast. Oh, Charter proved me wrong. So we'll, um, we'll do everything we can to have that fixed for next week. I'm going to look into wireless uh, bandwidth options and uh, satellites, unfortunately not an option when it comes to bandwidth, not for uh, not high so speed, much. not for uplink. So Very we're going to see what we can pull in here and um, go from there. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. You can watch us live next week, hopefully with video. <laughs> you can hear us live at least next week. We'll be here some way next week. <laughs> uh, and that's at 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time on Friday. That's going to be at 6 o'clock p.m. Thursday Pacific Time, 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. If you want to Figure out what time zone that's in. Go to, I think it's uh, time.gov. We'll actually do the conversion for you. <laughs> so, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for putting up with uh, uh, episode 202. We're getting better. We, getting we weren't, better. We weren't three hours late this time. No. We did. A, I think we did a lot better. But uh, we're about an hour and a half late. Well, yeah, but you know, 45 minutes of that was charter. I know. So I know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get each week. So episode 203, I think we're going to have a lot of this more worked out. And Love you guys. We'll be, we'll be good. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.